The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations Lewiston, Idaho on your new fire apparatus, job number 33725. Please utilize this five digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. We'll get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Starting under the front bumper, you'll find two open-ended tow hooks located on the passenger and driver side. Moving over to the passenger side, very bottom section is where you'll find the drain for your front bumper turret. Moving to the driver side face of the front bumper, you'll find an air horn. Next to it, you'll find your siren and also PA speaker. Moving to the bumper extension area, passenger and driver side, you'll find a side facing emergency warning light. Moving up from that location on the passenger side is your bumper turret. Just inside of that location is the mechanical siren. Also located in the front extension, you'll find a tub storage location with a swivel inch and a half discharge and also an on off valve. Moving to the outer edge, you'll find a turn indicator marker light. Just inside of that, the headlight cluster housing the low and high beam. Up from that location, a turn indicator and also forward facing emergency warning light. On the outer edge on the passenger side, you'll find a side facing camera. Moving up from that location, there are three windshield wipers across the seamless one piece windshield. Moving up to the brow, there are five running lights across the brow. Located directly in the center, you'll find a forward facing floodlight. Moving up at the very top on the roof is where you'll find your emergency warning light bar. Located with inside that light bar in the center is the Opticom. Let's move to the outer edge of the vehicle. This is going to be the passenger side where you'll find your door locks. They do have a keyed door lock in addition with a manual pull. You'll also find grab handles at all points of entry for personnel. Moving up to the driver and passenger side is where you'll find your side mirror housing a convex and flat mirror. Moving to the notch area, you'll find a side facing scene light. Let's review some of the items. First, starting with your bumper turret, mechanical siren. Just underneath the bumper turret is where you'll find the front turret drain. Let's move to the center of the front bumper extension where you'll find a swivel discharge in the tub storage location, dry deck material. On the opposite side of the turret is where you'll find the valve for on and off for that front bumper load. You also have a front discharge drain. Let's move just up from this location where you'll find your shoreline inlet. This is a 20 amp auto eject plug. Here's your headlight cluster housing low and high beam headlights, turn indicator and emergency warning light. We're now at the mid section. Let's go over a few warning labels. First, we'll start at the top ones. We have a entanglement hazard, a pressure warning hazard, and also a fall hazard. Down in the next lower section, you'll find a warning label here regarding not mixing different brands, consistencies, or types of foam for a foam failure hazard. To the right, you'll find the lever, which allows you to fill and draft for your foam tank. Moving down to the left-hand side, you'll find two discharges. These are two and a half inch male couplings, and they are number one and number three. Located in the center, you'll find your Pierce American Flag Eagle large diameter intake. Down at the lower right hand side in the image, you'll find your driver's side auxiliary inlet, two and a half inch female coupling, and then all your associated and color coded drains. Here's some close ups of those images we talked about the number one and number three discharge. This is going to be the draft foam and tank. Moving just down from this, you'll find all your color coded associated and labeled drains. Let's move upward from this location where you'll find three cross lays. These are your speed loads. Located with inside the same area, you'll find two latches. These latches allow you to remove the speed load from its current existing location so that you can load the hose in a different area. Let's move to the panel here. We'll start at the very top. This is your pump panel. If illuminated, indicating your pump is properly engaged, this light will be illuminating. Let's move to the left where we have a placard here that only trained personnel should operate this piece of equipment. 
only after reading the owner's manual and receiving proper training. Just down from that, you'll find the minimum operation maintenance schedule, which we'll come back to in a moment, and you'll find the foam level A tank level indicator. In the gray module area, you'll find two gauges. First on the left, your pump intake, and to the right, you'll find your pump discharge. These are your two master gauges. Just down from that, you'll find the test gauge ports for vacuum and pressure. They currently are plugged. To the upper right-hand corner, you'll find your PCM fault. If illuminated, it would be in a yellow color. And then just beneath that, you have an audible speaker. The audible speaker does have the ability to dampen the sound on the outer edge of the bezel by twisting. This is your minimum operation maintenance schedule for 150, 200, and 250 PSI. On the left-hand side, it shows the associated GPM with that test pressure, and on the right-hand side, it has the RPMs. You also have the job number located on this plaque and a governed speed. Let's move downward from this location to your discharges. You can see they're clearly identified and also indicate whether they have foam and water capabilities. To the right, you'll find the twist reel blowdown. Just beneath that, you'll find two placards. This is your Husky 3 foam system specifications and also instructions. Moving to the right, we're going to find your Pierce pressure throttle governor. If illuminated in yellow, it would be a check engine light on the left. Moving to the center, you have a digital readout for the RPMs. And then to the right, if illuminated, it would be a stop engine, and that would be in red. Just beneath that, you'll find all of your engine diagnostic information. Beneath that, you'll find in the blue module, this is your water tank level. Moving to the right, you'll find a red silence button. This allows you to silence the audible alarm. And then just beneath that, you'll find a orange menu button, which allows you to scroll through the various menu functions. Let's move down to the next section. You have two options for control mode. It's either pressure control or throttle control. Located between the two of those, you'll find a digital readout. To make that change, you'll push the control mode that allows you to scroll between either pressure control or throttle control. Located in the center, you'll have a green indicator that it's OK to engage the throttle. And then to the right, in green, you'll find a preset button, which allows you to pre-program preset throttle pressure. To increase the throttle, turn to the right. To decrease the throttle, turn to the left. If you like to push to the center, you'll find the idle button. Let's go ahead and move down from this location to the red module. This is your Husky 3 foam system. To activate the Husky 3 foam system, you'll need to engage the green button, which allows you to turn on the system. Just beneath that, you'll find a foam percentage digital readout. The gray buttons will add increase or decrease. And then to the right, you'll find the orange button, which allows you to prime the foam system. There are instructions at the very top and also a system status LED light on the right-hand side. This vehicle is equipped with two electronic valves, the number two passenger side and the large diameter passenger side in green and in orange. Moving to the right, you'll find your fire pump primer. It is a push to prime air. Just beneath that, you'll find priming instructions. To the right, you'll find your deluge discharge. You can see in the wheel itself, it's a position marker for open to close. And then all the way to the right, you'll find your driver rear discharge. Moving just to the left, you're going to find your tank fill and recirculating line. And just next to it, you'll find your tank to pump. Let's move down to the next section where we'll go over some of the items within this area. First, let's start with the few of the valves down the lower section. There are two upper ones. These are twist, not pull. And the lower ones are going to be all your associated color-coded drains. As we move inside the pan door, you'll find this yellow handle, which matches the instructions on the left-hand side of the door. You also have a manual pump shift override just referring back to the yellow handle. Those were for foam fill operations. Also on the left hand side of the panel, you'll find your driver side scene light, passenger side scene lights, and also a red air horn button. Moving just outside of the pump panel into the next compartment, you'll find when plugged into shore power, these two plugs will be activated. As we move just in front of the front wheels, you'll find three SCBA bottle storage locations with retraining straps. And then you're also gonna find over the rear wheel, a tool board. The D handles allow you to open it. Once it's in the open position, it might lock, so the uh, release mechanism is on the inside hinged area. You also have a silver 
uh, ultra low sulfur diesel cap, that's the silver, and the blue cap would be your 4.5 US gallon DEF tank. Let's move to the rear where you find your wheel chocks just underneath the compartment. There are two of them. Just up from that location you'll find a pull-out style shelf. That tray does allow you to release by the release mechanism on the right. You also have at the very top a pull-out tilt-down shelf. To the rear of the apparatus is where we're going to find our brake, turn, and reverse lights. Those are on the right and left side. You'll also find a set of emergency warning lights, upper and lower. Let's go ahead and uh, review some of the other items. To gain access to the very top, there are four fold-down steps on the left-hand side of the vehicle. As we move to the right, you're going to find the ladder control mechanism. This is the electronic controls for lowering your ladder. We'll go over that in just a moment. There are also a rear discharge. It's a two and a half inch rear discharge. Located in the very center, you'll find your backup camera. And then as we move to the very side of the vehicle, you'll find your upper and lower emergency lights. And then you'll also find side facing scene lights. Here's some close ups of those images that we just talked about. Same layout for the passenger side. Let's go ahead and review a couple things here. Powered equipment rack, you do have some danger and some warning information here. There is an on off and up and down. On the left hand side of the rear section, you'll find your rear lights and also your hose bed lights. As we move to the center compartment in the rear, you'll find your red line. The push button will allow you to electronically roll if there is a need for manual. The location with the black slot is going to be the manual location for the tool. There are some warning labels here, once again fall injury and also not riding on the rear of the apparatus. We do have a pressure hazard here. All of your caps do have the pressure relief built in with them um, and also a entanglement hazard because of those hoses coming from a higher location. You do have the ability for long tool storage and then also uh, on the opposite side your 10 foot folding ladder and this is also where we have stored your suction hose for your foam system, the pickup hose. Moving to the top of the apparatus, we'll identify a few things. You do have some hatch compartments. As we look inside the hatch compartments, they do house LED lighting inside and also dry deck material. Let's go ahead and move now just to the center section, forward hatch area. You're gonna find your water fill location. This is for top fill and then you'll also find your top location for foam fill. This is for foam tank A. There's also an indication here for a warning label, once again, not to mix different brands or consistencies of foam for a foam failure warning. As we look to the dunnage area, you're gonna find your Husky 3 foam system. That's the pump mechanism on the left. You're also gonna find your master stream device with an on-off wheel valve at the very top. We'll go ahead and through a few more identifiers. This is the fill location for that Husky 3 for the hydraulic oil. We'll go ahead and move through now a couple more close-ups of some of the other images. This is your master stream device. Moving to the right, you're gonna find your equipment rack hydraulic reservoir behind the small Pandor. It does have some information here on the type of hydraulic oil that's required. As we look inside that area, you'll find the fill location, which is the black and red cap. Let's look to the cab itself. We do have some warning labels here. This is a non-walking surface. That's why we have these warning labels here on each side of the cab. Looking from the front section all the way back to the rear of the apparatus, let's now move over to the passenger side rear compartment, where you'll find a pull-out style tray at the bottom, and then two adjustable shelves inside. Once again, LED lighting in these compartments and ventilation. Moving to the rear section, rear tire, you'll find three SCBA bottle storage locations here with retaining straps. Over the rear wheel, you'll find an adjustable shelf. As we move just to the forward section, you'll find three additional SCBA bottle storage locations with retaining straps. And then we'll also find a pull-out style tray down at the lower section and two adjustable trays in the upper portion or shelves. I would like to point out this uh, sticker here, a warning, extremely hot diesel exhaust temperatures, be cautious as to where you park your vehicle. 
Let's move down to the midsection of your apparatus where we'll see this cab lift. There is some caution and danger information here along with instructions. We also have that same warning label here regarding entanglement and then also a caution to remove your bumper to it prior to raising your cab. We do have a fall and also pressure hazard warning label here also. As we move uh, just to the side here, we'll find the Pierce logo American flag. This is the passenger side inlet. Moving to the right, those electronic valves do require an override. That's what we're showing here, two and a half inch discharge. As we move to the green section, there's an override and also your large diameter discharge. Moving down to the lower left in the image, you'll find your passenger side auxiliary inlet. It is a two and a half inch female. And at the lower section here, you'll find your color coded and labeled drains. Here's once again that caution, remove bumper turret before raising the cab. On the left, you have instructions on how to raise. Close up here of the passenger side auxiliary inlet. As we move to the center section, you'll find the override and also number two passenger side and the large diameter discharge. All your associated and color coded and labeled drains are at the very bottom. As we move to the midsection, it is the same layout as the driver's side. And then let's go ahead and move to the cab area. You do have exterior access just behind the driver and passenger seat. As we look inside the cab area, you'll find two forward facing seats in the rear and then you'll find two cabinets in the front section. We'll scroll through a few of these images here just to identify. You'll also find compartment lighting and webbing for those compartments for easy access and visibility. You do have a continuous power supply. That's going to be located, as you can see, in this area on the cabinet storage location. This is a 750 watt power supply. This is looking from the rear facing forward. Just at the base of this location is where you'll find your daily checks for oil and transmission. There is a light inside this compartment. Located behind the passenger and driver seat, you'll find outlets when plugged into shore power. They will be active. Let's go ahead and move now to the passenger seat. This will be the officer seat starting on the door panel. You'll find all of the warning labels located on each of the door panels for all personnel entry points. You'll also find in this space your windshield wiper fill location. Your vehicle is equipped with a supplemental restraint system. This is an airbag located here. Make sure you follow mounting instructions in mounting equipment in this area. Here are some close-ups, windshield wiper fill location, the very bottom electronic siren and mechanical siren foot pedals. As we move to the center section, you'll find um, this has just not been mounted yet, but once you've had your final inspection, this will become mounted. That was the bumper, con uh, bumper turret control module. You do have a siren brake located on the housing, and as we look overhead at the passenger seat, this is your Firecom base station. This is for the wireless section. And we do have a set of switches, which we'll go over in just a moment. First, let's start with the switches, driver side, passenger side, scene lights, and then driver side, passenger side, alley lights. Looking overhead, you have push on and off white and red lights. I would, unlock, would like to identify the red flashing light in the center. That's indicating do not move your apparatus. You may have a compartment or a door in the open position. Let's move to the driver's area. You'll find on the panel itself, all of your warning labels for firefighter safety. You'll also find seat belt information on the seat. The seat belts are red for color for ease identification if people are wearing them. And then you also have this set of placards. I would like to cover those in just a moment. First, I'd like to point out, here's the placard of all of the uh, warning labels located on the door panel. And then also you have electronic window controls. Let's go back to the original yellow placard. This is the manufactured by Pierce for your department. It has the date of manufacture, gross vehicle weight rating, job number, VIN number, cold tire inflation, and also all of the components and fluid capacity and fluid types. Let's now move just upward from this location to the steering column area. We'll first start on the left hand side with the ignition switch. Above that you'll find the start switch. It's important to allow the vehicle to move through its normal cycles when the ignition is engaged prior to gauging the start system. 
To the right, you'll find the EM Emergency Master. You'll also find headlights and parking lights, and then also a panel switch, which allows you to brighten or dim the panel lights within your front panel area. Just down at the very bottom is where you're going to find your master battery switch. It is the silver switch located in the very upper left-hand corner. To the right, you'll find your engine transmission ABS diagnostic ports and also all of your switches for ABS diagnostics, DPF regen, engine diagnostics, and engine inhibit. Down at the floorboard, you're going to find your mechanical siren just to the right, brake treadle, and also accelerator. Moving to the right of the column, you'll find your stationary OK to pump and roll indicator, your water pump, and your foam system. Moving up from this location, you're going to find the flat mirror and also convex mirror control. As we look to the dash panel, on the left, transmission oil, DEF level, and water temperature. On the right, you're going to find your volts, fuel, front air, rear air, speedometer located in the center along with the tachometer. Above and below those two large tachometer and speedometers, we'll find diagnostic information that will display if necessary. To the right of the uh, steering column is where you're going to find your siren control and PA speaker. There's two sets of switch banks. We'll talk about those in just a moment. We'd like to point out the yellow diamond here is your pull to apply your system parking brake and push to release. To the right is your Allison transmission pad with an indication here to pump in neutral. Let's go back up to the very top where you'll find your siren control PA speaker system. As we move downward, you'll find your engine brake on and off, low, medium, and high settings, load manager, and mirror heat. To the right, if you push on the windshield wiper, you'll get fluid and then also settings turn right to left. You do have an Opticom high beam flash, your siren or horn, and then a siren brake in red. You do have climate control functions here for heat and defrost, and also AC. As we move to the very top section, you'll find the monitor for your backup camera. Over the left-hand seat position of the driver, you'll find this label, which is a yellow placard indicating the height of the vehicle, 11 feet 3 inches, length 32 feet 8.75 inches and a gross vehicle weight rating of 45,000 pounds. If you make any changes to this vehicle please update this placard. Let's move slightly to the right where you'll find a set of switches housing uh, your emergency master, your roof light, your front warning light, side warning light, lower rear warning and upper rear warning. Any of these switches have been engaged to turning anything on they will illuminate in the green section allowing you to understand that the light has been engaged. Moving to the right, you'll find your front flood, driver side scene, passenger side scene, and rear scene. Same thing, if you've activated the switch, the light will illuminate within that switch indicating that it is on. Moving to the right in the next module area is where you're going to find a digital readout for your pump pressure. And then to the right, you have two additional gauges. The one on the left in blue is going to be your water tank. The one on the right that's in green is the foam A tank. Those are indicating the level of, of uh, product within the tank. Located in the center you'll find your Pierce seat belt information. Red indicating someone is in the seat and not belted. Green indicating that someone is in the seat and belted. Just to the right you'll find the pull horn for your air horn. That is the lanyard. Also on the left hand side you'll have this Pierce placard custom built for Lewiston, Idaho. Congratulations on your new fire apparatus job number 33725. If you have any questions regarding your pumper please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.